My name is Kevin Spratlin, and I am the Division Chief of EMS Administration. So tell us about the insurance reimbursement that the Healthcare Navigator Program has received. We were very pleased to see that Governor Lee has signed a bill into law this year that the City of Memphis had sponsored. Uh, in this bill, we asked the state legislature to direct TennCare to reimburse EMS, EMS agencies like ours for different types of services, such as treatment in place and transport to alternate destinations. And the reason that's important is in EMS, we are only reimbursed when we put a patient in an ambulance and transport them to an emergency room, even if it would be better for them to be seen at a primary care clinic, if it would be better for them to be seen at a behavioral health center, or for something just to be resolved on the scene. Therefore, we've had this perverse incentive for four decades where we should always take people to the ER every time, even if something else is better. So thankfully, uh, the state legislature listened to us. They passed our bill unanimously every step of the way, and Governor Lee signed it so that we will now be able to get reimbursed by TennCare for providing these alternate services. We're very excited and appreciate their support. And for people who don't know, tell us a little bit more about what Healthcare Navigator is. Healthcare Navigator is part of Memphis Fire Department's Emergency Medical Services. And it was started in 2015 because uh, the city and the fire department recognized that many of the people who utilize 911 uh, probably need services that don't require a paramedic transporting them to an ER, that they need to be connected to other services in the community like uh, social service agencies and behavioral health and primary care doctors and assistance with a variety of those uh, activities of daily living that some people have trouble navigating. So that healthcare navigator program was uh, put in place to do exactly that. The issue that we encountered was without a reimbursement mechanism in place, we weren't able to get paid by the insurance companies for providing this type of care, which is why we were able to go to the state legislature this year and have a bill introduced, which they ultimately passed. We've also been working with Medicare for a similar program and are pleased that uh, we are part of that as well. Healthcare Navigator has grown tremendously over the last several years. We have several different initiatives that are ongoing. Uh, one of them involves uh, the care of behavioral health patients. We have great partners with uh, Memphis Police Department and Alliance Healthcare Services that are embedded with our team and we respond on behavioral health calls throughout the community and we help those persons get connected to appropriate care, avoiding the ERs, and most importantly, avoiding any jail time that sometimes is associated with those issues. We also have a wonderful collaboration with the local physician group that, where we have uh, them riding along and we're handling uh, non-emergency medical calls. And we have a team behind the scenes that's working with those who are utilizing 911 a little too much or they're in desperate situations that need a little bit of extra care. How many people does the program serve on a weekly basis? So currently, Healthcare Navigator operates 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and we are laying plans to be 24-7 later this year. Currently, we are uh, handling uh, several hundred calls per week. We think we can do far more than that. There is significant need in our community, and we've built the infrastructure to be able to serve that need. So let's talk about sustainability. That's an issue with any program. How does the insurance reimbursement help that? Healthcare Navigator has existed through the years on a series of grants that have been very helpful to allow us to build the program and to expand to where we are now. The significance of this insurance reimbursement is that we're able to be sustainable, that we're able to be reimbursed for the work that we're doing, that we provide a service and we are paid for that service, and we can be less reliant upon the grant funds that uh, have been generously donated to us through the year, years, but uh, are not uh, renewable. This will allow us to be able to get paid for the work we're actually doing out in the community. The importance of that work is that we're preserving those emergency resources for high level events, but most importantly, uh, we're serving the public. We're connecting them with care that's most appropriate for their need and leaving our ambulances and our emergency rooms available for life-threatening events. 